اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین یا قنابد و یا قنستین اہدن سراط المستقیم سراط الزین انمتا علیہم غیر المغضوب علیہم ولزوالین سلوات اللہم صلی علی محمد نوال محمد السلام علیکم The surah that we have just recited has got ten names فاتحة الكتاب ام الكتاب ام القرآن سب المسانی الوافیہ القافیہ الشافیہ الاساس السلات and the most commonly used الحمد This surah, the opening, in comparison with other surahs of the Holy Quran regarding its tone and melody has a peculiar style which is clearly different and extraordinary. The other surahs containing instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives commands and admonishments to his servants. But in this surah, his words are uttered on behalf of the servants. In other words, in this surah, Allah has taught his servants how to supplicate and to speak to him simply and without a mediator. Speaking of this surah, the Holy Prophet ﷺ has said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, Allah has not sent down a similar surah, that is a surah like the surah Fatiha, neither in the Torah nor in the Gospel, nor in the Psalm, and not even in the Holy Quran and Quran. The Holy Quran is Umul Kitab. Thus, we come to know of the importance of this surah, which brings out the attributes, the divine acts, the unity of worship, and the essence and the meaning of the whole Quran. Referring to this surah in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that to the Holy Prophet, we have bestowed upon you the seven verses and the Grand Quran. The seven verses of the Holy Quran, which is the Surah Fatiha have been termed separately like the Holy Prophet ﷺ has said that Allah has positioned these seven verses of the Holy Quran at par with the complete book. The Fatiha Tul Kitab is the dearest of the treasures of the Arsh and Arsh is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a very well known hadith of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam that whatever is there in the Holy Quran is there in Surah Fatiha and whatever is there in Surah Fatiha is in the first ayat Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and whatever is there in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is there in the bar of Bismillah and I am the dot that is below the bar. Now beginning with the surah let me talk about the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The verse itself gives the meaning of the entire essence of of the religion in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most beneficent and the most merciful explaining the ba the ba is the connection between two words actually bismillah is a composition of three words bism be ism and allah the name of anything is not the thing itself so the moment we take give a name to anything we use an abbreviation like if we call anybody, any person or anything by any name, it is not actually the name of that person is not that person himself, but he has been named so. Thus, the ism is the name that we give and uh, Allah is the name that we have given to Allah himself. Be ismillah in the name of God. So, be is the connection between the man and the divine. In short, when Azat Ali alayhi salam says that he is the be of bismillah, he says that he is the connection between the man and the supreme. The Supreme, who is the most beneficent and the most merciful. Beneficent and merciful. These are two words that have been used. That is Rahman and Rahim. These words actually mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim to everybody. No, not everybody. He is Rahman to those who obey him and Rahim to everybody. Like even if somebody doesn't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't stop water, air on him. If he doesn't uh, find somebody who is not uh, doing his worship or he is not following the norms of Allah, Allah has the authority, he has the power to stop air, water, anything on that person. But he doesn't do that. Where else? When person is doing good, he rewards him. 
Thus he is Rahman and Rahim. In the second and the third ayat, he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. This is the second and the third ayat of this surah. Allah says that praise belongs to Him, Him and only Him. Now, Alhamd, Alhamd means praise. Hamd is when you praise somebody, but somebody means actually whenever you are praising anybody, directly, indirectly, the praise goes to the Creator. In this surah, Allah informs us of His attributes and his beneficence through his names. In fact, in this surah, there are five names and attributes of Allah that have been brought out. Allah, the supreme name that we are supposed to use. Rabb, Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. He is the Lord of everybody. He owns everything. Thus, whatever is there in this earth belongs to him. And Rahman and Rahim. The Rahman and Rahim, we have explained while explaining Bismillah, but again, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Maliki Yomid Deen. Remember, there is going to be a day of judgment, and on that day, He is the Malik, He is the owner. And that day, you will come to know the real power, the real functioning, the real essence of whatever you have done, whatever has been done by anybody, He will be punished. Thus, He should remember there is one day when He is going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yakanabdo wa yakanasdain. Thee alone we worship, and to thee alone we shall return. Remember that we shall be taking help only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This basic essence again means that when we worship Allah, we have the buddhiyat of the mabud, we are going to follow whatever He says and whatever is there in His direction, and we are seeking a prayer from Him. O oh Lord, we want to worship you and we want to follow. And what do we want to follow? Ahdina Sirat al Mustakima. Put us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy bounties, not the path of those who were inflicted with thy worth, nor those who had gone astray. Herein we have a dua. Lend me ye chahunga ki ye dua me urdu me padu, ta ke bacho ko hamare aur asani se samaj me a jaye. Yaha jab parvardigar ham se kehta hai. कि ए बंदे मुझसे मांग और क्या मांग सबसे अहम सूरह है कुरान की सूरह हमद यानी कि अब तक मैं तफसीर में जो बता रहा था कि इस सूरह के अंदर पाक परवरदिगार ने अपने पांच नाम लिए हैं यानी जब हम अब परवरदिगार को समझना चाहें तो उसकी सिफात के जरिए समझेंगे जब हम किसी भी चीज का नाम लेते हैं किसी भी चीज को नाम देते हैं तो उसकी उस एट्रीब्यूट उसकी एक बात जो उसमें होती है खसूसियत उसके हिसाब से उसे नाम दिया जाता है यहाँ पहला नाम अल्लाह आता है दूसरा नाम आता है रब्बुल रबालमीन फिर आता है मालिक योम दीन फिर आता है अर रहमान अर रहीम ये सारी एट्रीब्यूट्स सारी बातें सारी सिफातें परवरदिगार की परवरदिगार से कहने के बाद उसे खुश करने के बाद हम क्या मांगते हैं ए है पाक परवरदिगार मैं उन लोगों के रास्ते पर चला जिन लोगों से तू खुश हुआ और जिन लोगों पर तूने अपनी नमतें अपने इनाम अदा किए जहाँ वो लोग नहीं जो लोग उसके रास्ते पे मैं बिल्कुल न चला ना जिनसे तो गजबनाक हुआ जिन पे तो गुस्सा हुआ जो लोग अपने रास्ते से भटक गए और गलत रास्तों पर चलने लगे गलत काम करने लगे ए परवरदिगार तुझसे यही दुआ है हमारी कि हमें उन लोगों में रख उन लोगों के रास्ते पर चला जो लोगों से तो खुश हुआ और ना कि उन लोगों से जो लोग तुझे गजबनाक करते हैं जो लोग तुझे गुस्सा दिलाते हैं और तेरे गुस्से का सिला कुछ नहीं बल्कि इंसान की हार है आखिर उद्दावान अलहमदिल्ला रबीआलमीन अल्लाम सल महमदन वाल महमद